Now, if you've ever used tools like Oxygen or Bricks Builder, you've probably come across tools that allow you to set up and configure global styling. This is a very quick and easy way of setting up multiple different styles and then applying them wherever you want. And then if you make a change on the master, everything else will update across your site. It's just a really quick way of working. Well, Generate Blocks actually gives us a very similar way of doing that. I'm gonna show you in this video exactly how to set things up for yourself and how this impacts your design. So let's go ahead and take a look. So this is the hero section of the site that I'm working on. And I wanna place a couple of buttons underneath this sort of subheading section. So let's go ahead and do just that. So let's hop over to the dashboard and see how we can do this. So first of all, let's come over. This is the design we're working with. So let's open up the options on the left-hand side and we can go ahead now and drop our buttons in where we want them. So open up the relevant container. We're gonna to click to add in our buttons and we're gonna do a search for buttons. There we go. There's the generate blocks buttons. I'll add a second one in as well. And then we'll just put in, for example, let's talk. And the second one we'll put in subscribe. So we could go ahead now if you wanted to and adjust the colors and the spacing and the padding and the margins and all those kinds of things using the normal options on the right hand side. And we can do that very easily. The problem is if we want to recreate that or use that somewhere else, we've then got to copy and paste those styles onto all the buttons subsequently throughout our design. That's okay on one page, but multiple pages, it's a pain in the butt. Plus, if you make a change, you'd have to go and make those changes everywhere throughout your site, double pain in the butt. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can work with this. Let's just update this option. So we're going to leave those buttons as they are. I'm going to hop back out of here. This time we're going to come down into generate blocks and into global styles. You can see I've already created a buttons group and inside there I've got two buttons, my primary and my secondary button. These have all been configured. The text that sits inside there and any links and things like that are completely totally irrelevant. Don't worry about what they are. But we basically create a button and we apply a custom global style name to it. And we'll come back and we'll create a third button just so I can demonstrate in a moment. Once we've done that, you can see each one of these has their own unique name. We now have these labels which we can use and reference. So once you've done that, we come back out of here, we'll open up our page. Let's select that first button. All we need to do is select it, come over to the right hand side and you see right at the top, we've got use global styles. Let's enable that. And inside there, you can see there's our two buttons. So whatever global classes you set will be available inside you. We'll choose button primary. We'll click and you see our button has now been created. Our hover effect and everything is set up. But the text is exactly what we put in there. If we go and select our second one, we can come in, use our global style, set this to be our button secondary, and we've now got our second design. And if we want to, we can select things inside here. We can come down and insert an icon. So for example, we may want to put something like a play icon or a sort of Chevron icon. All those things can be done inside here. Now, this is really cool, but you may be noticing that there's a spacing problem here. So you may think, well, we go back to the global styles and make the changes, but you don't need to, because that then would have an effect and you might not want that effect. It might be put in spaces where you don't want spaces. So what we can do? Well, all we need to do is select our first button, come back up to our spacing, and inside there, we're just gonna come into our margin and we're gonna put 20 pixels of margin on the right-hand side, and boom, there you go. So that's kind of overriding the global style with a custom element that's part of this specific instance of that global style. Hope that makes sense. So now let's go ahead and update this. So now we've made those changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at this on the front end of the site. And there's our buttons, all the hover effects, everything all in place. Now, this is where the benefit of having those global styles really come in. Let's go back in and edit one of those global styles. Let's say, for example, the second button, we want it to be a different color. So let's select it. Let's come over to the options on the right hand side. And we're going to come into our colors. We're going to set a background color on here. And we'll set this to be this pale gray. And we'll set our text color for our normal state to be this orange. Looks terrible, but it's just an example. Let's click update. Hop back over to our page where we're using those buttons. We'll click refresh. And you can see there our button now has been updated to take into consideration exactly what changes we've made. So it's really, really simple to work with. If we come back out of here, we can undo that, set everything back to what it was. So now if we want to create another button and apply our own custom styles to it. Let's go ahead and do just that. Let's open up our list view and open up and create a third button. So we'll select this. We'll click add and there's our third button. Let's go make this a smaller one. So we're gonna say, for example, we wanna put smaller on the sides and the top. We're gonna to use this for example, something like the category inside our blog loop. And we might wanna have this as a solid color with no border. So again, we can get rid of all these values. It's gonna be smaller, so we're gonna set a smaller border radius. We'll set four on there. 
and we'll say we want the color of this on our background it's going to be this sort of mid gray should we say and we'll set our text to be darker and we'll set our text to be smaller so we can do our typography we'll set this to be something like 300 and we'll set it to be 0.9 so we've now created a third type of button all we need to do now is come over to the right hand side of where we've got GB button and this string of digits. We can go ahead and lock that, click OK to confirm, and we're just going to call this tertiary button. So underneath, you can see we've got button secondary, because it's just copy things over. So we just set that to be tertiary. And this label is what we'll see on the actual back end of our site when we're selecting things. This is the unique identifier for that specific thing that the CSS is going to reference. We don't need to worry about using that. We just need to set it to something that's unique. Once you've done that, we'll click on update. We'll come back over into our original design. Let's go ahead and add another button in. And all we need to do now is come up, making sure that global styles is enabled. It's done that because we've just duplicated a button basically. But we can click on there and we can see button tertiary. We can click on that and now that picks up our styling that we've just set up. And if we want to override any values on this specific instance, we can simply make changes inside the editor itself for this particular button instance. And that won't affect the actual uh, global style. It'll only affect, affect this instance in our design. I hope that makes sense. But you can use this across the board. So what I would generally tend to do is create a basic style sheet that will have my headers, my footers, my buttons, and any custom things that I want. And I'll create separate global styles for each of those elements. So all my headers will be in one global style, or maybe all my typography, all my buttons, my images, my form elements, whatever it is I want to apply styling to. Name them with their unique names, and then I can reference those in my designs to be really quick and efficient, making changes, applying styling where I want it, all those kinds of good things. That's just one of the really cool things you can do with global styling inside Generate Blocks. As always, though, all the applicable links are in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down twice, because that always works. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.